And our other big story this afternoon, a new tape just released of a jailhouse visit with Casey Anthony. Now, this visit with her parents took place on August 14th. That was right after George Anthony shouted, as you remember, at a reporter for asking him about the theory that perhaps his granddaughter, Kaylee, may have died accidentally. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You know, let, let, me, Shut up. let me tell you one thing. That is the reason why I got a phone call Shut at 11 o'clock last Shut night. The lady go. was crying because I'm, I'm of that kind guys. of stuff on the, radio, or on the Let's news. Go. Let's go. Let us go. So, after that outburst, George and Cindy then went in and met with Casey for about 45 minutes. Mike DeForest joins us now with some of that tape. And, Mike, you say that Casey in this appears quite emotional during this visit. Well, like her parents there, Casey is very angry in this tape, very angry, supposedly because she was trapped in jail and was helpless to search for Kaylee. Little did she know, less than a week from when this visit took place, a California bounty hunter would arrive in town to set her free. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful. I love you. Hi. I love you, too. Why is she crying already? <laughs> because we haven't seen you. In their final and most emotional jail visit just days before a bounty hunter would bond Casey out, Cindy describes to her daughter the toll this case was taking on them. How are you feeling? Not. We're not doing well, Kate. None of us. Lee's been sick. That's dad's blown up at the media yeah i heard <laughs> well someone just said that kaylee was dead this morning that she drowned in the pool that's the newest story out there surprise surprise during the conversation cindy continues to pepper casey with questions about kaylee's abductor i was in lake county two days ago okay is there anything there mom jesus I'm, I'm sorry. I love you guys. I miss All you. Right, sweetheart. Here's dad. Hold on. No, I'm, I'm going to hang up and just walk away no, right now because... Me. Please don't. I'm Please frustrated don't. and I'm angry and I don't want to be angry. This is the first time I've truly, truly been angry this entire time. But I'm so beyond frustrated with, with all of this. But I can't even swallow right now. It, it hurts. Just to understand, we're all going in so many different directions. We just want to go in the right one. Well, I can't point you in that direction when I'm literally at a standstill. For the first time, we're learning about a secret in-person meeting that attorney Jose Baez thought he could arrange between Casey and one of her family members. She would have chosen her dad. I mean, I wanted to see Lee and I wanted to talk to Lee, but I knew most of that would be an interrogation with him he'd have a whole list of questions that he'd ask me with mom a mom would dominate a lot of the conversation which is how it's been i mean you and i we, we've been separated for a while and we were just i want to see all of you but i wanted to see the one person that i've been so far disconnected from the longest and that's been you this jailhouse visit occurred less than a week after Kaylee's third birthday back in August. Coming up all new at 6, you'll hear how Casey described how she spent that very emotional day. Bob and Jackie. And George Anthony talked about the secret face-to-face -face meeting with Casey. Did that ever happen? She said that's who she wanted to meet with, right. with all of her family members. Did not happen. We don't know any of the details behind this. This was the first time we're really hearing about this, this meeting and Jose Baez trying to arrange this face-to-face. -face. But I can tell you we spoke to a jail spokesperson, yeah. and uh, he says that couldn't happen. Uh, only attorneys and clergy are allowed to visit inmates, also maybe some legal team from the attorney's office. But he said that would be highly unusual for a parent parent to be brought into the jail to meet with their child face to face. Yeah, you're in jail. They watch everything that you're doing. You're not going to be able to have a secret meeting. No. Yeah. Okay. First time we've seen her so fired up like that, though, Mike. Just really irate talking to her parents on the phone. Yeah, you could tell she didn't want to have much to do with her mom. She only wanted to talk to her dad and just angry and almost guilt tripping them into bonding her out. And we'll have more of that coming up at six as well. And, and knowing what we know now, it makes it all that more s surreal and strange. All right, Mike, thanks. By the way, the meter reader who found Kaylee's remains has indeed collected a $5,000 reward. Mark Nijame, the lawyer who once represented George and Cindy Anthony, paid the money. Nijame confirmed to Local 6 that he made $5,000 representing the family. It was paid to him by an unnamed charity. Meantime, the Orange County deputy who responded to the first tip about Kaylee Anthony's remains has just been reassigned. Now, you'll remember, meet a reader, Roy Cronk, called in a tip by Deputy Richard Kane 
cleared the scene where Kaylee's remains were found last month. Kane has been taken off patrol duties. He must also surrender his ID cards, badges, and weapons. He will work a desk job at the sheriff's office until the investigation is over.